I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea. Western population remains largely unfamiliar with Asia and the way of life on this continent. Consequently, our understanding of the Democratic Republic of Korea, or North Korea, remains remarkably limited. Distinct from any other location in the world, this East Asian country has consistently emphasized isolating its citizens, particularly since the armistice of the Korean War in 1953. Governed by megalomaniacs and paranoid leaders, North Korea operates within such seclusion that the inner workings of the nation remain shrouded in secrecy, with only the testimonies of spies and defectors providing glimpses into its reality. Our knowledge of North Korea is strictly governed by the information allowed by its leadership. Here we present a compilation of the 15 weirdest things that only exist in North Korea. Number 15. The Prohibition of International Phone Calls When it comes to telecommunications in North Korea, making international phone calls is strictly prohibited. The government has a tight grip on the use of technology, especially when it comes to countries they consider enemies. While North Korea does have a popular mobile phone service with over 3 million subscribers, it only allows local calls and prohibits international ones. If ordinary North Koreans are caught using mobile phones to contact loved ones who have fled abroad, they risk being sent to political prison camps or other detention facilities. Despite the risks involved, many people are taking advantage of North Korea's thriving informal private economy. Traders smuggle various goods, particularly from neighboring China, including mobile phones and SIM cards. These devices, often referred to as Chinese mobile phones, enable North Koreans near the border to access Chinese mobile networks and communicate with people outside the country. To avoid detection while making calls abroad, people keep their conversations short use pseudonyms, and often go to remote, mountainous areas. This reduces the chances of calls being jammed or security agents spotting individuals using the phones. Numerous reports have confirmed that the North Korean government views its control over communication as a powerful tool to suppress the voices of its people. By restricting international calls and communication technology, they attempt to obscure information about the extent of human rights violations in the country. Number 13. Prohibition on blue jeans and Western clothing. North Korea, a country known for its numerous restrictions, tightly regulates almost every aspect of its citizens' lives, including their choice of clothing. As a matter of fact, blue jeans are actually banned over there. Now, you might be wondering why the country would go to such lengths to ban blue jeans. Well, it all comes down to Kim Jong-un's perception of them as a symbol of U.S. influence. He sees blue jeans as a threat to the North Korean way of life and decided to make them illegal for citizens to wear. The official newspaper of the North Korean government, Rodong Sinmom, even published an article expressing concern about young North Koreans embracing Western fashion trends. They urged people to be cautious and fight against any signs of a capitalist lifestyle. But it's not just blue jeans that are off-limits. Western clothing items like t-shirts, skirts, and suits are also banned. Instead, the government requires citizens to don traditional Korean clothing, such as hanboks. Now here's where it gets really strict. If someone is caught wearing blue jeans or any other Western clothing items outside, they have to wait on the side of the road until Youth Patrol completes a thorough inspection of the area to identify additional violators. Once the patrol is done, all offenders are transported to the Youth League's office, where they must confess their fashion offenses in writing. They will only be allowed to return home if someone provides them with more suitable attire. It's like a whole fashion police operation. So, next time you're decluttering your closet, remember that what may be considered normal fashion in your country could land you in trouble in another part of the world. Number 12. Restricted Airwaves When it comes to television in North Korea, forget about streaming services like Netflix or HBO Now. The country has banned satellite television, leaving its citizens with just four state-owned channels. These channels include the Central TV Channel, which broadcasts important political news, the Mansudi Channel, dedicated to foreign country news, the Sports Channel, offering various sports coverage, and the Cable Line Channel, featuring live programming. 
These channels typically air from daytime to prime time. It's worth noting that until the 1990s, there was only one channel during weekdays and two on weekends. In North Korea, watching Western television can result in individuals being sent to labor camps. On North Korean television and radio, as well as in the country's press, you'll often find stories that focus on the lives of content workers, loyal soldiers, the portrayal of the United States as imperialist aggressors, the depiction of South Koreans as puppets, and the glorification of the remarkable achievements of former North Korean leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. The news reports by North Korean media follow a predictable pattern. They typically begin with praising Kim Jong-un and highlighting the respect shown to the leader by foreign nations. At some point, the narrative shifts to reprimanding the United States, either directly or indirectly. In addition to controlling the content aired on television and radio, North Korean programs also promote a specific dietary practice. Citizens are urged to have only two meals a day. While the government denies that this practice is due to food shortages, they claim it is aimed at promoting good health and nutrition. Number 11. The Suppression of K-Pop K-Pop, short for Korean popular music, is a popular music genre that originated in South Korea as a significant part of its culture. It has gained immense global popularity in recent times. However, in stark contrast, K-pop is not favored or popular in North Korea. Ever since assuming power over a decade ago, Kim Jong-un has been critical of South Korean entertainment, including K-pop, movies, and TV dramas, which he believes have a corrupting influence on the minds of North Koreans. To discourage the consumption of K-pop, Kim Jong-un intensified the penalties for engaging with it in North Korea. Listening to K-pop is classified as a felony, carrying a potential prison sentence of up to 15 years. Furthermore, a law enacted in December 2020 has made the smuggling of South Korean entertainment, including K-pop, a capital offense in North Korea. Disturbing reports indicate that North Korea has publicly executed at least seven individuals in the past decade for distributing South Korean K-pop videos. These executions, with the exception of one, were concentrated in the city of Hyasan and took place between 2012 and 2014. Citizens were forced to witness these gruesome scenes, where officials labeled the condemned individuals as social evils before executing them. Number 10. The Fake Village In addition to the numerous propaganda activities in North Korea, there exists a fake village situated on the border between North and South Korea. After the Korean War in the 1950s, both sides agreed to create a buffer zone called the Demilitarized Zone, which is 4 kilometers wide and stretches for 250 kilometers. As part of this agreement, all villages within this narrow strip of land were to be dismantled, with the exception of one village allowed for each country. South Korea chose to preserve Daeseon Dong, also known as the Freedom Village, while North Korea decided to construct an entirely new village called Kijong Dong, commonly referred to as the Peace Village. The North Korean regime at the time claimed that Kijong Dong was home to various amenities, including schools, a kindergarten, a child care center, a hospital, and more than 200 residents. From a distance, the village of Kijong Dong might appear like any other ordinary settlement, with people going about their daily lives. However, this perception couldn't be further from the truth. The the so-called Peace Village is nothing more than a propaganda tool devised to entice South Koreans to defect to the supposedly prosperous North. In reality, the town is devoid of human inhabitants, with only a handful of caretakers occasionally seen cleaning the streets. Even the residential buildings scattered throughout the town are suspected to be mere facades, lacking floors and interior walls. Despite having no residents, the village is brightly lit at night, as if it were a real place. Observers from South Korea have witnessed this empty village and confirmed that no one actually resides there. Interestingly, the project had unintended consequences that bordered on the comical. In the past, the village's loudspeakers played North Korean propaganda, like patriotic songs and messages against other countries. In response, South Korea played K-pop songs through their speakers as a way to respond and make things more amusing. Number 9. The Controlled Hairdos One aspect tightly controlled by North Korea is hairstyles. Surprisingly, the country maintains a strict list of state-approved hairstyles for both men and women. If anyone is spotted with a hairstyle that deviates from the approved options, they can expect to face punishment. For men, hairstyles such as spikes or using hair gel are prohibited. Similarly, women are not allowed to have layered cuts or bob hairstyles. Hair salons in North Korea prominently display illustrated guides showcasing the only haircuts deemed acceptable by the authorities under Kim Jong-un. 
North Korean women, for instance, have a selection of 15 approved hairstyles to choose from. Their hairstyle options are even influenced by their marital status. Married women are expected to keep their hair short, while unmarried women are permitted to have longer hair, often styled with curls at the bottom. On the other hand, North Korean men also have 15 approved haircut styles to select from. Men are strictly forbidden from growing their hair longer than 5 cm, although older men are granted a slightly longer allowance of up to 7 cm. Interestingly, Kim Jong-un excluded his own hairstyle from these restrictions to maintain its uniqueness. However, in 2015 reports emerged that Kim Jong-un had ordered men to emulate his distinctive hairstyle. Those who violated these guidelines faced having their hair forced cut by authorities, particularly within universities, which were reportedly cautioned to be vigilant against any hairstyles associated with capitalism. Women were spared the obligation of adopting Kim's highly stylized haircut, but were reportedly advised to imitate his wife, Ri Solju, by opting for a bob hairstyle. Number 8. Basketball Rules it is widely known that North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un possesses a deep passion for basketball, particularly for the 1990s Chicago Bulls, and holds great admiration for basketball legends Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman. In South Korea, basketball is played with a rather peculiar and unconventional set of scoring rules. These rule changes were reportedly initiated by Kim Jong-un's father, the late North Korean supreme leader Kim Jong-il, from whom Kim Jong-un inherited the title in 2011. It is believed that Kim Jong-un has also made some additions of his own to these regulations. Let's take a closer look at North Korea's unusual basketball rules. Firstly, slam dunks are worth an impressive three points. Secondly, three-point shots receive four points if the ball does not touch the rim. Furthermore, a deduction of one point is imposed for every missed free throw shot. Additionally, any field goal made within the last three seconds of a game is rewarded with an astounding eight points. Lastly, games can conclude in a tie, unlike traditional basketball rules. While these rules certainly add a sense of excitement to the typical basketball game, no reputable league, including the NBA, would ever consider adopting any of these unique guidelines. Number 7. Imprisoned by Association In North Korea, people are frequently subjected to imprisonment without trial, often for seemingly insignificant offenses such as tuning into a foreign radio station, discarding a paper containing a picture of Kim Jong-il, or making a casual remark perceived as insulting to the regime. It is not uncommon for people to be arrested and incarcerated without any understanding of the reasons behind their detention. A common strategy employed by the North Korean government to maintain control is to intimidate potential offenders or individuals who might engage in activities disapproved of by the regime by threatening harm to their families. North Korean law encompasses a concept known as three generations of punishment. This means that if someone commits a crime, their children and grandchildren will also bear the full weight of punishment, often resulting in a lifetime of imprisonment. Children born in prison are raised as prisoners, as their lineage is deemed inherently guilty. Entire families have been imprisoned for minor infractions committed by a single family member against the state. Nephews and cousins have faced discrimination and job termination due to the actions of distant relatives whom they may not even know. The infamous Kaichon internment camp, widely known as Camp 14, is a common destination for many of these prisoners. The primary the primary objective of this internment camp is to isolate individuals deemed politically unreliable by the North Korean government and exploit their labor. Those sent to the camp include officials perceived to have underperformed, individuals critical of the regime, their children, anyone born within the camp, and anyone suspected of engaging in activities deemed anti-government. Prisoners are forced to work in coal mines or factories involved in textile, paper, food, rubber, shoe, ceramic, and cement production. Among the prisoners, livestock raising is considered a preferred occupation as it offers opportunities to steal animal feed and scavenge for undigested grains in animal droppings. Number 6. Religious freedom in North Korea. Religious freedom in North Korea is among the most oppressive in the world. Despite the North Korean constitution supposedly guaranteeing freedom of religion, the reality is that this freedom does not exist in practice. As a result, North Korea is effectively an atheist state. Christians and other religious believers in North Korea face severe persecution, surpassing that of any other religious minority globally. The mistreatment of Christians, in particular, is marked by extreme brutality. Engaging in prayer, 
worship, congregating, or possessing sacred texts is met with harsh penalties, including torture and imprisonment. Although there are three Protestant churches, one Catholic church and one Russian Orthodox church in Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea, they function merely as state-controlled facades. The true nature of religion in North Korea is exemplified by Kim Jong-un's demand for absolute loyalty to himself from the North Korean people. The North Korean constitution deliberately restricts religious freedom to prevent any religious ideology from posing a perceived threat to the political status quo. According to research conducted by non-governmental organizations based on testimonies from defectors, it is estimated that as many as 70,000 Christians, along with believers from other religions, have been imprisoned in labor camps. Defectors have revealed that the North Korean government actively encourages citizens to report any unauthorized religious activities or possession of religious materials, including Bibles. Additionally, defectors have disclosed that due to the fear of being labeled disloyal to the North Korean government and reported to the authorities, Christians in the country often hide their religious practices from family members, neighbors, co-workers, and others. There have been several documented incidents, including the imprisonment of an entire family in 2009, solely based on their religious practices and possession of a Bible. The family, including a two-year-old child, received life sentences in prison camps. Christians who have managed to escape from North Korean prison camps have recounted the horrific conditions they endured, including extreme malnutrition, forced consumption of contaminated food, verbal and physical abuse, and even execution. Now it's time for today's subscribers pick. This picture shows two ladies in a public restroom. They are standing and urinating in an unusual way with their faces turned away from the camera. Who might these ladies be and what could be the reason behind their unconventional approach to peeing? Do you know of any other differences between North Korean ways of daily life and the life you live on the daily? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Number 5. Freedom of movement. In North Korea, the freedom to move around is severely restricted by the government. People are not allowed to move between provinces or travel abroad without obtaining prior approval, as it is considered illegal. To travel within the country, even for family visits, individuals must possess the necessary documentation. Certification issued by the People's Committee in the relevant province or city is required. Sightseeing opportunities in North Korea are limited to specific locations such as Mount Paektu and the Paektu Secret Camp, which is claimed to be the birthplace of North Korea's second leader, Kim Jong-il. Field trips are organized for model workers, students, laborers, and farmers from all over the country. However, the fear of political punishment often compels individuals to participate, even if they may not have a strong desire to go. The activities of foreign visitors in North Korea are also closely monitored by the government, with aid workers facing substantial scrutiny. They are restricted from accessing certain places and regions that the government does not want them to enter. Also, According to North Korean law, leaving the country without permission is considered a crime of treachery against the nation, punishable by death. Despite the risks involved, some individuals bravely attempt to escape from North Korea. However, if caught, they face severe punishments, including brutal beatings, forced labor, torture, and internment in political prison camps. Border guards have strict orders to shoot anyone entering or leaving without permission. There have been reports of border guards shooting North Koreans attempting to leave the country, leading to some fatalities. Number 4. The Price of Disrespect Under Kim Jong-un's rule, all North Koreans are required to pledge loyalty and obedience to him, his family, and the state. Any action or statement that could be perceived as an insult to Kim's family or the North Korean government is considered blasphemy and met with severe punishment. This applies not only to North Korean citizens but also to immigrants and tourists. Engaging in anything deemed a threat or insult can result in imprisonment or even execution. In January 2020, it was reported that a mother faced potential imprisonment for prioritizing the rescue of her children over saving a portrait of former President Kim Il-sung during a fire. You see, North Korea mandates that every home prominently display paintings of its past leaders, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, and sends inspectors to ensure compliance. It is required that all depictions of the Kim family be treated with the same reverence as the leaders themselves, making neglect or improper care of the portraits a serious offense. 
Failing to wipe off the dust from the portraits is enough to be considered guilty, so every family is provided with a special duster. Disrespectful acts in North Korea extend beyond these circumstances. Even seemingly small acts, such as falling asleep during a meeting while Kim is speaking, can result in capital punishment. For example, in 2015, North Korean Defense Minister Hyun Yong Chol was executed in front of over a hundred people using an anti-aircraft gun for alleged failure to carry out instructions and for dozing off during one of Kim Jong-un's events. In 2016, North Korea even prohibited sarcastic remarks about Kim Jong-un or the totalitarian regime in everyday conversations. Indirect criticism of the government was strictly banned as it was seen as a sign of disrespect. Party officials held numerous mass meetings across the country to warn citizens that making ironic statements like, this is all America's fault, would be illegal and unacceptable. Such retorts had become popular among citizens as a way to mock officials for consistently blaming North Korea's failures on the West. The consequences for disobedience can result in individuals and their families being forcibly removed from society and sent to political prison camps. Number three energy struggles. Energy shortages are a common occurrence in North Korea, leading to frequent blackouts in most areas. This satellite image, taken by NASA in 2014, vividly illustrates the lack of electricity in the country. North Korea's electricity supply is insufficient to maintain continuous illumination during the night. In the mid-1990s, the country's energy supply was entirely cut off by the Soviet Union. While neighboring countries such as South Korea and China brightly shine at night, North Korea has struggled to keep up with their level of lighting. This has negatively impacted the country, creating an impression of lesser development compared to its neighbors. In South Korea, the average person consumes 10,162 kilowatt hours of power annually, while North Koreans only use 739. As a result, entire streets experience shutdowns, and people retire to bed early due to the lack of activities in the darkness. In 2019, it was estimated that 55% of North Korean households relied on solar panels for their energy needs. Despite the energy scarcity, the city of Sinuiju, which is located across the border from China, receives only four hours of electricity per day. However, residents in areas visible from China are required to keep their lights on at night. Authorities have even instructed them to generate their own power to meet this requirement. This is because the North Korean government is concerned about how the outside world perceives the country and has historically made efforts to present parts of the country visible from South Korea and China as more prosperous than they actually are. Number 2. Silencing the Online Voice Millions of North Koreans face immense difficulty in accessing the Internet. While Internet availability exists in North Korea, it is strictly controlled and limited to those with special authorization. The country possesses certain broadband infrastructure, including fiber optic links between major institutions. However, most individuals and institutions rely on a domestic-only network called Kwang Myong, with access to the global Internet restricted to a select few. Access to the Internet remains tightly regulated, with estimates estimates suggesting that the total number of internet users in North Korea is only a few thousand. It is believed that high-ranking officials, members of non-governmental organizations and government ambassadors have unrestricted access to the global internet. Non-elites who require internet access for work or important matters must undergo a rigorous approval process, which reportedly takes several days. Once approved, individuals are subjected to continuous surveillance. A librarian is assigned to monitor two Two internet users simultaneously, keeping a close watch on their online activities. Every five minutes, the screen freezes automatically, and the librarian must perform fingerprint authentication to allow further internet use. Additionally, approved users are limited to one hour of internet access, and any extension requires another round of approval. Limited internet access is permitted in North Korea's academic institutions. For example, professors and graduate students at Pyongyang University of Science and Technology can access the internet through a monitored computer lab. These individuals are primarily tasked with retrieving scientific and technical information that can be posted on the national intranet. In April 2016, North Korea initiated a block on popular social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and South Korean websites. This action was taken due to the government's concerns about the spread of online information. Number 1. 
Employment under state control. On paper, the employment rate in North Korea is reported as 100%, as the law states that every citizen has the right and duty to work. According to the Constitution, individuals are supposed to choose occupations based on their preferences and skills, and they are promised stable jobs and working conditions. However, the reality is quite different. The job-seeking process in North Korea is not like in most other countries. In North Korea, individuals do not have the freedom to choose their jobs. Instead, jobs are assigned by the state. In this system, one's desired occupation has little influence on the actual job they are assigned. For example, high school graduates are required to fill out a document provided by the department, which is then evaluated by their schools. The schools send the document back to the department, which screens the graduates and assigns them work within enterprises in their respective regions. So if someone graduated from an agricultural high school, they will be sent to work on a farm. If they graduated from a technical high school, they will be assigned to a factory. Graduates from general high schools could be sent anywhere. College graduates, on the other hand, may have their major taken into consideration during the job assignment process. They often have an interview with a party official, but in many cases, they do not have the freedom to choose where they want to work. In essence, the party and administrative agencies in North Korea determine citizens' occupations based on their social caste and political inclinations, rather than their abilities or qualifications. Once a job is assigned, it is difficult for people to change their positions freely. In fact, most North Koreans hold on to their jobs until they retire, as job mobility is limited under this system. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.